Okay. So yesterday we talked about what invertebrates, I'm sorry, what vertebrates are. What are vertebrates? What are vertebrates? Mason? Animals with backbones. Animals with backbones. What is that other type of animal called? The opposite. Michaela? An invertebrate. An invertebrate, which means they? They have no backbone. They do not have a backbone. Good. So yesterday we learned all about vertebrates. What are two types of vertebrates that we talked about yesterday, or two things vertebrates can be? What's one of them? Zari. They can be warm-blooded. Which means what? That they, they, they're not cold. They're not, they, they're not cold. Mm, not quite. We're warm-blooded and we can be cold sometimes. What does it mean to be warm-blooded? Kingston. Sorry, don't forget to meet yourself. Very good. So if you are warm-blooded, if you are an animal who is warm-blooded, your body temperature doesn't change that much. And your body heat, I'm sorry, your body temperature stays where it is because of the energy you get from food that you eat. So your body heat comes from the inside of your body, from eating food and that energy create or helps your body temperature. What's the other type of vertebrate that we talked about? What is that other type? Uh, Ethan? Cold-blooded. Cold-blooded animals. And animals that are cold-blooded, what does that mean, Ethan? They're cold well but we're cold too that means they can't get hot or they can get hot let's see who can help him zadie they cannot control their body temperature. they can't control their body temperature remember Ethan, you can use your vocab if you need to don't forget to uh mute yourself they can't control their body temperature where does their body heat come from mason outside of their body. So think about it if you go to the zoo and you see a lot of those reptiles, they have that red light shining on them so that they can get heat. Very good, okay. We also learned that there are several, what? Seven different types of vertebrates. There are, what were they? Who remembers? Tell me one type. We haven't read about them, but we learned that there are seven types. Mason, tell me one. Reptiles. Reptiles? Kingston? Amphibians. Amphibians? Ethan? A bony fish. Bony fish. Very good. Michaela? A jawless fish. Jawless fish. Good. Cullen? A mammal. Mammals? Carla? Birds. Birds. And one more. Zadie? Cartilaginous fish. Cartilaginous fish. It is a weird word. I have trouble saying it too, and I've been saying it over and over and over again for four years now. Cartilaginous fish. fish. Cartilaginous fish. Let's all keep trying to say it because we're gonna read it today, soon, like almost immediately. Cartilaginous fish. Cartilaginous fish. Oh, Zari's got it, I heard her. Cartilaginous fish. Cartilaginous fish. Cartilaginous fish. Okay, one more time, I think you guys are getting it. Maybe two more times. Cartilaginous fish. Cartilaginous fish. One more time. Cartilaginous fish. Cartilaginous fish. Awesome. Okay, good. Now let's fish. use that word. Please read Kingston. Everybody, finger ready to follow along. We are starting with the subtitle fish. So everybody, finger ready to follow along. When I see everybody's finger ready to follow along, I will let Kingston know. Carla, make sure your finger's ready to follow along. Kingston, go ahead. Fish. The three, the three classes of fish are 
a jolly cartilage. You got it. Cartilage. Cartilage. Confidence. You got it. I heard you say it. Be confident. Don't be scared. Cartilaginous. There you go. Good. Wow. The first two, the first two have skeletons named cartilage. 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 Cartilage is the same rubbery material that your outer ear or your tip. So, if you feel your ears and the tip of your nose. Is it super, like, can you bend it? Or is it like your arm where you can't bend it? In the middle, between your elbow and your wrist. Which one? It's very flexible. That's what cartilaginous and jawless fish skeletons are made out of. So that means, do you think that they break their bones very easily? No. Because if they did, that would mean that just doing this would break our ears. And does that happen? No, so it's rubbery, which means it bends easily. It's flexible. It's more soft than bone. Well, but bony fish aren't made of cartilage. Where do you think they got their name? Where do you think bony fish got their name? It says they're not made of cartilage. Mason? They got their names for having so many bones in their And are their bones more like ours, or are they rubbery like our ears? Very good, they're more like our arms. They have bones more like what we have, whereas jawless and cartilaginous fish have are made of cartilage. Good, uh, Kingston, go ahead and read that next paragraph. Everybody finger ready to follow along. What are the first three words of that paragraph so that everybody can find it? Jawless, jawless fish have. Jawless fish have, so find jawless fish have. Put your finger on it, ready to follow along. <clears throat> when I see everybody's finger, I will let Kingston know. Zadie, is it super quick? Yes. Okay, what is it, quick? I think we do actually have a bone on our nose, but like not right. Exactly, yeah, our bone kind of ends like pretty quickly and then it becomes cartilage. Yes, correct. Okay, is everybody's finger ready to follow along on jawless fish have? Okay, Kingston, go ahead. We can see what they're talking about by that jawless fish. Find the jawless fish. That's a lamprey or lamprey. I think it's lamprey. That's a lamprey. So you can see that its mouth looks like a suction cup. Do you see that? If you ever see lampreys in an aquarium, a lot of times they're like stuck to the side because their mouth is acting like a suction cup and they're eating like the little algae and things along the side of the aquarium. We can also see the other types of fish. We can see a cartilaginous fish at the top. What is that? What is that in that picture? Victoria? A shark. A shark. And we saw sharks and rays, like stingrays, are examples of cartilaginous fish. Well, we have one more type of fish. Tell us about that other type of fish. Smith, everybody, finger ready to follow along. Smith, what are the first three words? Bony fish are. So find bony fish are. Everybody heads up. And Smith, go ahead. Bony fish are the largest of all vertebrate classes. Let's pause They're for a still. second. Does that sentence mean that the fish themselves are the largest of all the vertebrate classes? 
No, what do you think that sentence means? Michaela? There's the most in that group. Very good. There's the most organisms in that group out of all vertebrate groups. Because if they meant that the fish themselves were the largest, that would mean that there would be bony fish larger than like elephants. And sometimes whales can be that, but they're cartilaginous fish. No, they're mammals, sorry. So, so which one do you think has the biggest animals? If you know that whales, I'm sorry, the biggest, which one do you think has the largest animals? If you know that whales and elephants are mammals. Victoria. Which group? Mammals. mammals, good. So they don't mean that bony fish are large animals. They just mean there are the most animals in the group called bony fish. Uh, Smith, keep going. Their skeletons are made of bone and they are covered in scales. Tuna and goldfish are bony fish. Good, can you imagine a goldfish bigger than an elephant? No. no. That's why it's really important to make sure that you read the words carefully. Because if you didn't read the words carefully or think about what that sentence meant, you might say, oh, bony fish are really big animals. It's just a big group of animals, but most of the animals are kind of small. Very good. Let's look at this diagram on the right of page 91. What is this diagram telling us? What is it telling us? Zari. Classes of vertebrates. Okay, and we have two different groups. How do they group these different types of vertebrate? Colin. They grouped one cold-blooded and the other warm-blooded. What do you think that means? What do you think their grouping means? Colin? The ones that are cold-blooded are in the cold-blooded group and the ones that are warm-blooded are in the warm-blooded group. Good. So they took all seven classes of vertebrates and they separated them into the ones that are cold-blooded and the ones that are warm-blooded. Are there more cold-blooded vertebrates or are there more warm-blooded vertebrates? Victoria. There are way more cold-blooded. Which vertebrate groups, I'm sorry, which, yeah, which vertebrate, vertebrate groups are cold-blooded? Which vertebrate groups are cold-blooded? Carla. Reptiles, jawless fish, amphibian, bony fish, and cartilaginous fish. Cartilaginous fish. Cartilaginous fish. Good. Which vertebrate groups are warm blooded? Zadie. Birds and mammals. Birds and mammals. Which one are we in? Ethan. The mammal. Mammals, very good. Let's find out what that means in a little bit, not yet. Read, oh wait, uh, Smith. Keep reading on page 92. Everybody ready to follow along? Finger ready to follow along? Smith, what do we notice right away about these very first words? That they are in big blue letters. They are in big blue letters. What does that mean, Smith? that it's going to be on the outline. We're gonna see it again on the outline. So where do you think all the answers for the, that group of questions or statements is going to be, Smith? On the outline. Well, but where are the answers to what goes in the uh, outline gonna be? In this section. In this section, very good. Okay, Smith, go ahead and read. What are some other vertebrate groups? Amphibians. Frogs, toads, and salamanders are amphibians. Amphibians are cold-blooded vertebrates that spend part of their lives in water and part on land. Good. Smith, what is our fourth vocabulary word? Amphibians. Amphibians. Make sure you spell it correctly. There is no F in amphibians. Amphibians. There is also no D. So make sure you do not have a D. Amphibians, and what are amphibians, Smith? 
cold-blooded vertebrates that spend part of their lives in water and part on land. Good. Amphibians are cold-blooded <clears throat> vertebrates, which means they have what class? If they are vertebrates, what do they have? Backbone. A backbone. They are cold-blooded vertebrates. That spend part of their time on land oh. and part in water. Hey, we go swimming sometimes. Does that mean that we are amphibians? No. no. What do you think they mean by spend part of their time? Do they mean like us where we occasionally go swimming? Mason? They mean they actually live half of their life on land. Good. Maybe not half, but part. Yes, they actually live part of their life on land and part of their life in the water. Do we ever live part of our life in the water? No. Well, you could try to, but it probably wouldn't be good for you. And if you live on a boat, do you live in the water? No. You live on the water. So even if you live on a boat, you are still not an amphibian because you don't live in the water. I could tell that was where some of you were going next. But that means they actually spend part of their life, they live part of their life in the water, like under the water and part on the land. Okay, thank you, Smith. Read next, oh, Aaron's not here. Read next to me, Miss Follis. The first three letters, I mean words, are like all amphibians. So everybody, finger ready to finish the definition, and then finger ready to follow along on like all amphibians. When I see everybody's finger ready to follow along, I will begin. <clears throat> like all amphibians, a frog begins its life in water. So which part of uh, amphibians' lives do they live in the water, based on that sentence? Carla? When their life begins. So very good, when their life begins. So the first part of their life, they live in water. Okay, let's keep reading. Frog eggs hatch into tadpoles. Tadpoles have parts, like gills, that allow them to live in water, but not on land. So, an amphibian, can, are they able to spend the first part of their life on land? Class? No. No, no. they can't. Amphibians have to spend the first part of their life in water. They don't choose to, they have to. Let's keep reading. As they grow, these parts change. New parts, such as lungs, help the adults live on land. Do baby amphibians have lungs so that they can live on land? Class? No. No, they only have gills. No. So they must live where? Kingston. Well, but answer my question, please. They have gills. Baby amphibians have gills, which means they must live where, Kingston? In water. In water. Because can a fish, a fish has gills. Can they live outside of the water? No. That's the same with a baby amphibian, but what happens as they get older? Zadie? They grow long. They grow or develop lungs. Let's keep reading. The first three words are an amphibian's skin. When I see everybody's finger ready to follow along, I will continue. An amphibian skin needs to stay moist. Even though it has lungs, the adult also breathes through its skin. 
If the skin dries out, the animal will not survive. That is why amphibians always live near water. So let's think about this. Baby amphibians must live in the water. They cannot live on land. And then as they get older, they develop lungs. Does that mean grown-up amphibians cannot live in the water? Think about everything we just read. Does that mean that grown-up amphibians have to live on land? Ethan? No. No. Where can grown-up amphibians live, Ethan? In the water too. Land no. and water. Very good. In fact, they must be near water. Why must they be near water? Carla? So if they dry, if their skin begins to dry out, they can get in the water and soak it. I mean, very, soak it. Very good. Because if their skin begins to dry out, it's a hot, sunny day. Well, they need to be near water so they can get in it and get wet again. Because remember, they have lungs, but they also breathe through their skin. Their skin must be wet to do this. So if you find a frog, it's not just breathing from its lungs like we do. It's also breathing out of its skin, which seems weird, but that's how it is. So if it starts to dry out, they have to get in water so that they can still breathe. Very good. Ouch. Okay, read next, Michaela. Tell us where we are so everybody knows where to put their finger. Reptiles. Reptiles. The subtitle set that says reptiles. Everybody, finger ready to follow along. And Michaela, go ahead, loud and slow, so that everybody at home can hear you. Lizards, snakes, turtles, and alligators are reptiles. Reptiles are cold-blooded vertebrate things that live on land. Good. So number five is what, Michaela? Reptiles. Reptiles. Make sure tall letters are tall, short letters are short. Letters with a tail like P go below the line. Short letters only take up half the line. Tall letters take up the whole line. I's are dotted, T's are crossed. What is a reptile, Michaela? Good. Cold, blooded, vertebrates that live on land. So do you think that we find any reptiles in the water for longer than the amount of time it takes to drink some water, cool off or something, or just cross a puddle? No, because vertebrates, I'm sorry, reptiles are cold-blooded vertebrates that live on land. Now they may get in the water occasionally, either because they're crossing a puddle or they're getting some water or something like that, maybe even cooling off, but they don't live in the water. Yes. Okay, save it for later and then you can tell me you can tell me, okay? Because we got to move on. Okay. Michaela, keep going. Oh, wait. Tell us where we are. Unlike amphibians. So find and unlike amphibians with your finger. And go ahead. Unlike amphibians, reptiles have dry skin. Their skin is covered with scales or plastic. Not plastic. Flakes. There you go. This strong waterproof cover helps reptiles live on land. Good. So amphibi I mean sorry, amphibians have their skin has to be what? Amphibian skin has to be what? Michaela? Think, listen to my question. Amphibians skin has to be what? Smith? Amphibian skin has to be wet. Wet. Reptile skin 
is what? Colin? Dry. Dry. Keep that in mind, because I'm going to ask a question in a little while, or you might need to know that. Okay, thank you, Michaela. You know what? Go ahead and read that last paragraph. You had some short little paragraphs. Because they cannot breathe through their skin, reptiles use lungs. Their eggs are tough to keep moist, moisture from escaping. Good. Let's look at this diagram on the bottom of page 92. What is it showing us? What is the title of this diagram? Zari. Amphibians and reptiles. Good. And we have two animals, a frog and a lizard. Which one is which? The frog is what? The rept, I mean the uh, lizard is what? Mason? Is what? Uh, a reptile. How do you know? Just by looking at the picture. You told me already. But repeat it for everybody now that. How do you know that the lizard with the red scales is a reptile? But just by looking at the picture. Good, because he has scales all over his body. And do reptiles or amphibians have scales, Mason? No. Which one? Reptiles or amphibians? Reptiles. reptiles. Well, now that means the frog must be an amphibian. How can we tell just by looking at the picture that a frog is an amphibian? Zari. Because it's close to water. It's well, in water. Do reptiles live in water, Zari? No, they'll just get in there occasionally. Yeah, they just get in there occasionally. Kind of like us, except minus for fun. Because, well, maybe, I don't know. I don't really know what's on a reptile's mind. But... How do we know that a frog would be an amphibian because it's in water? What does it say about amphibians in water, Zari? Amphibians breathe through their skin, so they need water. They need they need water to live. Good. They breathe through their skin in order to be the able to do that. Their skin must be wet. Uh, yes. Go. What? Who is that? Ethan. Oh, Ethan? Okay. Did you say that I was breaking up? Sounds like he said he had to go. Miss Ballas, you're kind of breaking up. Yeah, I wondered because you kind of are too, but now you're okay. Am I okay now? Yeah, but you're kind of blurry over there. Yeah, me, it yeah. might be. Um, Just try to keep up as best you can, and if you need to, you can go back and watch the video of this part later. Okay. But you're looking better now, so maybe it was just a moment. It is rainy, so sometimes internet on all sides messes up. Okay. Okay, very good. So we know the frog is an amphibian because it's in water. Amphibians must live near water. We know that the lizard is a reptile because we can see its scales, and we know reptiles have scales. How are the frog and the lizard the same? How are those two animals, the frog and the lizard, the same? Smith. They're the same because the reptiles, they can be, well, they have to be on land, but the amphibians, they can also be on land. Good, so they can both live on land. What else makes them the same? Zari? They're cold-blooded. They're both cold-blooded, and there's one more thing that I'm looking for, that they both are. Mason? They're both vertebrates. Very good. There's, oh, there's actually one more thing. What do they both have, at least when they're older? Zadie? Lungs. How are they different? How are they different? Carla, what's one way they are different? One way they are different, reptiles have dry skin and amphibians have, have moist skin. Good. So amphibian skin has to be moist and wet. Reptiles have dry skin. What else is different? Michaela. So reptiles have to live on 
on land. Amphibians have to live in water at least part of the time. Good. Anything else that you can think of? Zadie. Uh, amphibians, like frogs, were born in water, and reptiles were born on land. Good. Amphibians are born in the water. Reptiles are born on land. Okay, let's keep going because we only have about 15 minutes to finish. I think we can do that, but we do have to keep going. Okay, thank you, Michaela. Let's move on to birds. Mason, where are we? Where should we put our fingers? On birds. On birds. That big black subtitle. Once everybody's finger is ready to follow along, I will let Mason know. Not on the bird, but on the word birds. Go ahead, Mason, loud and slow so everybody at home can hear you. Oh, oh, pause for a second. What's our next word? What's number six? Birds. Miss Bowers. Yes. He's kind of reading very fast. That's okay. That's okay, because it, it, it's like you guys at the beginning. Birds. And what are birds, Mason? They have and they are warm-blooded. And they are a what? They are warm-blooded. They are a mammal. They're not a mammal. Birds are different from mammals. They are warm-blooded. So they're what? Good. Birds are warm-blooded vertebrates, and they have what? Feathers. With feathers, good. So birds are warm-blooded vertebrates with feathers. So we have moved past all the cold-blooded animals, and we are now on the warm-blooded animals. Mason, when you're ready, go ahead and keep reading. Everybody, once you're done writing, make sure your finger is on feathers are light. Everybody finger ready to follow along? Make sure your finger is following along. Even though all birds have feathers, not all birds can fly. For, for birds that, that do fly, other traits come in handy. The light hollow bones help them. Oh, remember when you go to a period. Take a breath. Something that 
let them go through this air. Okay, so they have those strong muscles um, in their wing, or they have those strong muscles on their body that help their wings to fly. Good, along with the shape of their wings. Good, what's one more thing that helps birds to fly? Zadie. Light, hollow bones. Light, hollow bones. Because if you have very heavy, dense, that means thick bones, do you think it's very easy to fly? Probably not. We have that. Is it easy for us to fly? Unless we get in an airplane or a helicopter or something that does the flying for us? No. What else? One more thing. There's one more thing that birds have that help them to fly. Zari. Their feet have scales. Well, do the feet have scale the feet having scales? Do that does that help them fly? Or is that just a trait they have? Just a trait. So what's one more trait they have that helps them to fly? Ethan. Their muscles. Well, their muscles, that's what Carla said. There's one more thing though. Kingston. Yeah. Carla to told us that too. Colin? The feathers. Not the feathers. Michaela? They're powerful lungs. Think about if you're in the swimming pool. If you take in a big, deep breath, what happens to your body in the pool? Does it sink? What happens to it? Mason, if you take a big breath, does your body sink? What does it do, Zadie? It floats more easily. Well, think about a bird. They're in, way up in the sky. If they have a lot of air in their lungs, that helps them to stay in the air. Okay, Mason, read that last little bit. Very good. Ooh, let's look at that fact down at the bottom. That's an interesting fact. Mason, go ahead and read it to us. Good. So when we see a snake, usually its skin is very shiny, and it may make us think, oh, it's slimy. But who's ever touched a snake? I have. Was it slimy? No, it was very smooth. So snakes and reptiles, if they are shiny, it's not because they're slimy. It's just because their scales are so smooth. Okay, let's go to the next page. We don't have much time left. I'm, am I yelling a lot? I feel like I'm being very loud. Sorry. Yes. I just get excited. Zadie, where are we? What are, what are mammals? Everybody finger ready to follow along on what are mammals. Zadie, what do you notice about those words? They're big and they're blue. They are big and they're blue. What does that tell us? We're going to see them on the outline. So those sentences with blanks underneath what are mammals on the outline, where are we gonna find the answers? Under what are mammals? In this section of the book. Okay, everybody's finger ready to follow along. When I see everybody's finger ready to follow along. Carla, make sure your finger's ready to follow along. And Zadie, go ahead. Did you know that you are a mammal? A mammal is a warm-blooded vertebrate with fur or hair. What's our next word? Mammals. Mammals. Oh, that's a weird day. Mammals. And Zadie, what are mammals? Mammals are warm-blooded vertebrates with fur or hair. Warm-blooded vertebrates with fur or hair. Wait, so why are birds not mammals? They're warm-blooded, but why are birds not mammals? Smith? Because they have feathers and mammals have fur or hair. Very good. 
So birds are not mammals because they have feathers. Mammals cannot be birds because they have fur or hair. Feathers are not fur, feathers are not hair. They are different, okay? When you're finished writing that definition, go ahead and put your finger where Zadie left off. When I see everyone's finger ready to follow along, I will let Zadie know. Mason, it's in your book too if you can't see. On that page, find the highlighted word mammals. On the other page, other page. Well, it might be there too, actually. Okay, Zadie, go ahead. Mammals can live in trees, water, and most other places on Earth. So, pretty much anywhere you go, you find mammals. What do they mean by water? Are fish mammals? Are echinoderms mammals? No, what about whales? They are. Whales actually do have like little hairs that make them mammals. And dolphins too, yes. But sharks are not mammals. They are cartilaginous fish. Okay, Zadie, keep going. Mammals care for their offspring. The three main groups of mammals are classi classified by how the young are born. Most give birth to live young, but some, may, but some lay eggs. Female produce milk to feed their young. Good. So all mammals ha are warm-blooded and have fur or hair. They can live in all different places, and they have their babies in different ways, but there are only three ways that mammals can have babies. Also, sorry, there's one more thing that they all do. They all produce milk to feed their young. Those are things that mammals have in common. They are all warm-blooded. They all have vertebrates, vertebrates. They all have fur or hair. They all produce milk to feed they're young. Those are the four things all mammals do. But there are three ways that mammals can have babies. Let's look at the diagram on the bottom. That is how they are split. That's how they are classified. So first we figure out if they're a vertebrate or invertebrate. Mammals are vertebrates. Then we figure out if the animal fits into one of those seven vertebrate groups. Once we figure out if it's a mammal, well then we figure out, okay, how does it have babies? What is the first way that some mammals can have babies. Actually, I'll pick a stick because I think I have a few people. I have two, so we'll see. Somebody will get to read again. Victoria, what is the first way that mammals can have babies? They can, um, Look at the diagram and read and tell us what it says. Mammals lay eggs. Did you know that some mammals lay eggs? Not very many, but there are some mammals that lay eggs. Tell us about them, Victoria. The Louder, can't hear you. The only mammals that lay eggs are the duck platypus and the spiny It's a compound word. So how many mammals are in that group? How many mammals are in the group of mammals that lay eggs? Colin. Two. Two, because it says the only mammals that lay eggs are the duck-billed platypus and the spiny anteater. Those are the only two mammals that lay eggs. They're not common, but they do exist. Okay, what's the next type of, what is the next way that animals have babies? Cullen. Oh, luckily we're almost done. Mammals with pouches. Mammals with pouches. That means they have a pouch where their babies develop. Which animals are these, Cullen? Kangaroos, koalas, and... That's a long possums. O at the beginning. Possums. Not possums, but say possums, but there's a long O at the beginning. Opossum. There you go. Carry their youngs in pouches. 
until the youngs are fully grown. Good. So these animals, kangaroos, koalas, and, possum, and opossums, they have pouches that actually open like this kangaroo, and the baby actually grows and develops in there, and then he actually lives in there until he's fully grown. What's the last way that mammals have babies? Zari. Inside. Okay, and tell us about mammals that develop inside. Sheep, bats, apes, and all other animals Not develop animals. inside the mother's book. Not all Why? other animals. That would mean like insects and echinoderms and fish and all that. So read that sentence again. Make sure to read the words closely. <coughs> Sheep, bats, apes, and other mammals develop inside the mother's body. So every mammal other than plat duck-billed platypus, spiny anteater, kangaroos, koalas, and opossums all develop inside the mother's body. Quickly, Kingston. Capybaras? No. They are mammals because they have fur. They can live. It, that's okay because mammals can live anywhere. We find mammals in every type of environment. Okay. Yes, Colin, quickly. Carla, turn your camera on, please. I live with snakes. Okay, very good. Okay, so for homework tonight, you do have your chapter two, lesson two outline because we are finished. Everybody at home, you do have that already. Everybody at school, I will go ahead and pass it out to you. Put it in your take-home folder, then clear your desks. Can we go ahead and clear them while you're...